good morning everyone i welcome all of you for this uh, second day of our online webinar creating awareness about intellectual property uh, rights protection for startups and entrepreneurs in rt sectors and this is the second day of our webinar and on this occasion i welcome heartily welcome our speaker madam garg sharma assistant professor department of plant breeding and genetics and member secretary iprsl assam agricultural university chorra assam madam thank you very much for accepting our invitation and delivering lecture this idp nai project and being said as a nodal officer i am also nodal officer of this idp nai project and we have been conducted lot of uh, online webinar uh, this is the first time we are going to deliver on this uh, uh, intellectual property rights it's a need of uh, um, creating awareness and need of the entrepreneur like uh, how to protect the um, for product or this any kind of varieties or developed technology so on this record uh, more than 402 people participants they have registered and uh, many of them they were joined through zoom as well as they are watching through online so dear participant before begin our program i would like to read a bit of uh, madam gargi sharma uh, mrs gargi sharma is working as an assistant professor in department of plant breeding and genetics and also a member secretary of iprsl assam agricultural university jorha after completion of her master in plant breeding and genetics she has completed llb and afterwards specialized in ipr from the indian law institute new delhi uh, besides the various ipr activities of assam agriculture university she was associated with the gi registration process for five product facilitated by assam agriculture university jorhat a list of publication about 45 publication in the form of research papers popular articles and technical bulletin seminars and symposium and so on so without it delaying uh, much uh, madam can i request you to uh, start the session i'll hand over the time to you and uh, good morning to everyone thank you sir for the nice introduction and i thank the organizers for organizing uh, this webinar on such an important topic because ipr is very very important for us and we feel that uh, in northeastern region actually the ipr awareness is very very low and for that uh, there is the need of organizing this type of webinars so i thank the organizers and i thank uh, all the organizing members for giving me this opportunity to speak here today and today i'm going to speak on the geographical indications so let me share my screen first uh is it visible my screen is visible yes yes your screen is visible ma'am you can continue okay okay so today we are going to discuss about the geographical indications in india with special reference to agricultural and horticultural goods um so i personally feel that geographical indication is one of the most important intellectual property rights because it protects the ip rights of those people who are least aware about their rights okay because geographical indication protects the rights of the indigenous people who are associated with the protection and promotion of our traditional knowledge they are the custodian of our traditional knowledge and so uh, they are actually they do not know what is intellectual property right what is geographical indication how to protect it how to get the benefit from this kind of right so they do not know so there is a need to 
uh, create awareness among these people who are from the grassroots level. So there is a need. So there is a need, and I'm happy that you are organizing the workshop, you are organizing the webinar, and then you have given importance to geographical indication. So this is very very important. Uh, so first, uh, today we will discuss about the introduction. Then uh, we we will learn what is uh, we'll discuss what is geographical indication when the act was enacted. Then we will discuss about the GI tagging of agricultural and horticultural products, the present and future prospect. Okay, then the conclusion. So we all know that it is said that every region has its name and fame. That means uh, in every region we will find certain products which are unique and which are found only in that particular region only. So that means from time immemorial, there are certain products which have a reputation, which are known for its quality, okay? And this quality has been carefully maintained and handed over from one generation to the next by the masters of the region, okay? The quality is due to that particular region and that is why that particular product is famous. So actually this kind of thing, this led to the development of a specific bond between the goods, the quality of the goods and its place of production or place of origin. Okay. And that means there was a bond, there was a nexus. And to recognize this bond, to recognize this nexus, the concept of GI was evolved. Just to recognize this concept, uh, the bond between the quality of the product and its place of production, the concept of GI was uh, developed. So when we see the definition, what is GI, then first thing we have to remember that GI is a community, right? Okay, it is not like patent. Patent, one, one single individual may apply for patent, copyright, then trademark, industrial designs, but GI is not an individual, right? It is a community, right? We have to apply through the community. And it is an indication, it is a mark, it is a, a symbol for which identifies the product. Okay, So there may be a range of products which may be identified by this GI. Okay, It may be a textile product or a handicraft product, paintings, then agricultural product, horticultural product, then wines and beverages, then foodstuffs. Actually, there are 34 different classes of goods. Okay, under which we can go for GI registration. So it identifies the product, okay? But we have to remember that product should have certain uniqueness in terms of quality or reputation or any other characteristics. And that particular quality must be due to its place of production. Then only we can tell that, yes, this product can be it, it, this product is uh, this product can be registered under the GI Act. First of all, it has to have one uniqueness, and that uniqueness may be in terms of quality, reputation, or other characteristics. And that quality must be due to the, its geographical origin. So linkage is very much important. Linkage of that quality of the product with its place of production. Then only we can go for GI filing. And always remember, this is a community, right? Now, until 1999, uh, there was actually no legislation in India to protect the geographical indication. So when in 1990, Kutri came into force and India became a signatory, then in order to comply with the various provisions of this agreement, India had to enact the geographical indication of goods Registration and Protection Act in 1999. Then later on in 2002, the geographical indication of goods, registration and protection rules came into force. And in 2004, Darjeelingki became the first GI registered product in India. And from Northeast India, Muga Silk of Assam, we know it's a very famous product, Muga Silk of Assam is the first registered GI of Northeast India. So this is the timeline. So till date, numerous products have been registered under, under this geographical indication of goods, Registration and Protection Act, which was enacted in the year 1999. So numerous goods have been registered under this act. 
So we find basmati rice is very famous. Mysore silk, it is a textile product. Then Mysore sandal oil, sandal soap, jasmine, then orange. Orange is a horticultural product. Then paintings, then Darjeeling tea. We know it's an agricultural product. Then pera, this is a food product. Then mango, laddus, sirupati laddus are also uh, uh, is a GI tech product. Then kola pari chappal, then nanjangar banana. Then uh, all these things are uh, GI registered products and certain uh, in worldwide Canadian whiskey, speech watch, then Florida orange, champagne, tequila, these are some uh, international products. Okay, the international reputation products with international reputation, these are also GI tech products. So the thing is that uh, GI is actually a territorial right. That means if we want the protection here in India, then we have to file GI, GI application here. That is why Champagne, Champagne is a famous uh, wine from France. So uh, it is a GI tech product from their area, but since it is a very famous product, so they, in order to get protection here in India, so they have already they have already registered champagne here in India also because it is a territorial right. Because when they will register champagne here in India, then only they will get the benefit. Then only they will get the protection. But all these things, all these products have certain uniqueness. All these products have certain uniqueness, and that uniqueness is due to its growing conditions. So we must remember that there must be linkage between the quality of the product with this place of production and all these uh, products have that particular uniqueness and its linkage so in 2004 darjeeling tea became the first gi registered product in india so darjeeling tea is known for its taste and aroma across the world and this taste and aroma is due to its growing condition okay darjeeling tea is grown across the hilly slope of Darjeeling. So the soil condition, the topography, the climate, etc., uh, uh, climate, etc., all these things actually contribute. And these are the contributing factors in the development of the taste and aroma of Darjeeling tea. So it is very, very important. If we grow Darjeeling tea here in Assam or in any other place in Arunachal, then we cannot tell that this is Darjeeling tea because it is a GI registered product. Because we do not have that climatic requirement, we do not have the topography or soil condition that is required for the development of the taste and aroma of Darjeeling tea. Now this is, uh, this is not an agriculture product, but Kashmiri Poshmina sauce. These are very famous product. Okay, Kashmiri Poshmina sauce are from Kashmir. Okay, it is a GI tech product and it is produced uh, the wool is produced from a particular species of goat. We call it Changtang. And Changtang is found only in the Ladakh region of Kashmir, which is the highest place on the art. And it has got certain goat species called Changtang. So the pasham or the fiber which is extracted, which is made from the Changtang goat, it is very, very fine. That is uh, 12 to 16 micron in diameter. Okay. It is only found in Kashmir, only the Ladakh region of Kashmir will find this particular good species. It's unique, so it's unique and it has a linkage with the geographical area. That means it is found only in the Ladakh region of Kashmir. And the only women folk of Kashmir can make this thin yarn, Pashmina fiber. So this is the uniqueness of this particular product. And today it is the Kashmiri Pashmina is a GI tagged product. So it is very, very important. First thing, whenever we want to file an GI application for a product, then first of all, we have to identify its uniqueness. Then we have to find whether that uniqueness is due to its place of production or not. Now, this is another important agricultural good, Nanjangar Rasabel. This is a banana species. Okay, this is a banana species. This is also very, very important because uh, this is a GI registered product in 2006. So this is a, a, a banana variety from my store. And it has the uniqueness is that uh, it is, uh, the taste is like a mixture of apple and banana. And it is found only in the Mysore region because it is grown in the black clay saline soil of Mysore, okay? 
So this is very, very important. So it has the uniqueness, its taste is unique. It's like the mixture of apple and banana, and it is found in the Mysore region, okay, where it is grown in the black, black clay saline soil in Mysore. So there is the linkage, and that is why it is a GI registered product. So now the question comes, uh, suppose we have a product, then whether we can file it, okay? Whether we can file it, whether we can go for GI uh, registration. So there are certain categories of uh, GI products in India. So major categories are handloom and handicraft products, then agricultural products, okay? And our agriculture would get the horticultural products. Then manufactured products are also there. Then food products, food products, can also be like I have already mentioned about the Tiruputiladus, then wines and beverages like uh, the Feni of Goa. Oh, this is this this is a GI tech product. Then handloom and handicraft products are very very famous. Agricultural products and even paintings, the traditional paintings. We can also Madhubani paintings are also uh, GI tech products. So so many things are there which can be. Um, protected under the GI Act. So till date, uh, GI registry, which is situated in Chennai, they have registered more than 344 goods uh, under this particular act and more than 242, uh, 344 goods uh, have already been registered and application pending 242. And Karnataka is the state with highest 33 numbers of GI. So when I see the statistics, then we see that handicraft items, okay, maximum handicraft items have been registered under this act, which is followed by agricultural goods, then it is followed by manufactured goods, and finally the food products. So in agricultural goods, when we see, then uh, if we see the statistics of horticultural products, then we can see that maximum food crops have been registered. Okay, maximum food crops have been registered, uh, which is followed by vegetable crops, then which is followed by plantation crops like tea and coffee, then spices, then uh, flowers and aromatic plants. So this is the statistics. But there are tremendous potential. There are a lot of goods with potential scope for GI registration in our area. So now when we see the state-wise uh, GI registration status of GI in horticultural sector in India, then we can see that uh, maximum GI registration for horticultural goods have been done from the southern states, okay? Then uh, from other states also, they have also registered their horticultural products, but from northeastern states, the product share is very, very less. It is only 8.5%. Uh, 6.25%, sorry, 6.25%. Uh, so this is the statistics. But in our area, in Northeastern region, we know that we are very rich in biodiversity. There are so many products in our region which can be registered under this particular act. But we need to identify, first we need to identify those products then we have to find the uniqueness, we have to find the linkage, then we have to establish the uh, historical proof of the, the place of origin. So many things, so it's a complicated process. So, so we need some expert in the field of, uh, which are technical experts, which are expert in legal uh, uh, or in law. So then only it's a techno-legal document. First of all, GI application is a techno-legal document. So we have to have the technical expertise as well as legal expertise. Then only we can go for the uh, filing of GI application. So there are so many products in our area, but due to our awareness and so lack of awareness or so many other factors are also there for which we are lagging behind. So now we are discuss about what are the benefits of GI registration. It is very, very important. What are the benefits? Why actually we should go for GI registration? So first thing, it confers legal protection. So actually, whenever, if we want to claim any benefit, then first thing, we have to have the right. If we have the right, then only we can claim our share of benefit. Then only we can claim that, yes, this is ours. So whenever we register any product, under this GI Act, then they 
and they will grant the GI registration, then the registered proprietor becomes the owner of the GI. Okay. Under them, there will be authorized users. They will have the rights over their product. So ultimately, it will give the legal protection. So once we get the legal protection, then only we can exploit uh, the benefits of the GI tech product. So one of the most important, uh, one of the most important uh, aspect of GI registration is that it prevents misappropriation of traditional knowledge. Because we know that traditional knowledge based inventions are not patentable in India. In India, if we develop some invention, if we have some invention which is based on traditional knowledge, then we cannot uh, patent it. Okay, then how to protect it? Because traditional knowledge is already in the public domain. And the primary reason of misappropriation or biopiracy of traditional knowledge is that it is freely available in the local communities. Okay, which is over a large geographical area. And this, the knowledge holder, traditional knowledge holders, they are not aware about their need to protect the intellectual property rights. So there is every possibility of misappropriation. There is every possibility of uh, biopiracy. So uh, GI plays a vital role in protecting and preserving the traditional knowledge. So once we register the product under the GIS, it will not only protect the product, it will protect the traditional knowledge that is associated with the product. So first thing, it confers the legal protection. Second point, it uh, prevents misuses of GI tank. Suppose once the GI is granted, then the, that particular community becomes the exclusive owner over their property. That the property means the product or the process or the traditional knowledge. So if some third party, uses it without obtaining the permission from the uh, registered proprietor or the community, then it leads to violation of the GI Act. Okay, so that means the registered proprietor can file a case against the third party who has used their product or used in the, in the traditional knowledge without obtaining the permission. So it is very, very important. So it prevents misuse of GI tags. Okay, so it prevents the unauthorized use of the registered GI by others. Okay, then only that uh, community or the registered proprietor or uh, the community, they will have the exclusive marketing rights. They will be able to earn money from it. So it also helps in boost, uh, it also helps in export also because GI is very, very important because nowadays we see an ever growing demand for natural herbal organic products, especially in the urban market or international market, or um, the products marketed using a GI tag has tremendous demand in the developing countries too. So once we get the GI tag, then it boosts the export by encouraging the marketers to expand their business worldwide. This is very, very important. There were numerous instances I will discuss later on uh, in my later slides. Uh, it boosts exports and finally there will be economic growth of the producers who are from the grassroots level because it promotes economic prosperity of the producers, okay? Uh, producers of the good, goods which are produced in a particular geographical territory. So there is a potential income effect. So whenever uh, the producers who are from the grassroots level now, they can produce their product and they can sell their products at international or national market. So these are the benefits of GI registration. So now we will discuss about the GI-based branding. Okay, GI-based branding is a potential marketing tool. So we can use the GI-based branding as a potential marketing tool. Now, before that, we should know why we should go for branding. Branding is, we all know that branding is very, very important. Branding is very, very important for marketing of a product. Because whenever uh, branded good, it, uh, it helps the producer, or it, it is not only helpful for the producer, but it is also helpful for the consumer because it helps the consumer to differentiate the product from the other products. So GI-based branding can be used as a marketing tool 
Also, branding of GI tech products can be an effective tool to increase the income of the stakeholders, means the producers. Producers who are from the grassroots level, our indigenous people who are the custodian of traditional knowledge. So branding is very, very important, but branding is very, very, it is very uh, challenging task, particularly for agricultural goods. Branding is a challenging task. It needs time. It needs endless effort. Now, uh, let us see the story of Pink Lady. Actually, the Pink Lady, this is not a GI tech product. This is a just reputed and successful brand of Apple. This is from Australia. So there are three Apple varieties that is Crip Pink, then Rosy Blue and Lady in Red. These are the three varieties uh, which are sold under the brand name Pink Lady. And uh, it is sold in more than 90 countries in the world, including India. But the success story of Pink Lady is not that easy. It is driven by its product quality and reputation. Due to, its, due to the quality of this particular uh, varieties, apple varieties and its reputation, uh, it, is, it is sold in more than 90 countries in the world. So nowadays we see that elite consumers, they prefer to use the branded products. And in case of agricultural products, they prefer to buy products with good quality standard, okay? But building a reputed brand for agricultural, uh, agricultural product or horticultural product is not an easy task. It needs time, it needs endless effort. But using the GI tag, we can uh, easily build a brand image. Okay, we can easily uh, build a brand image. And there are numerous instances because GI is, uh, we obtain the GI registration uh, for only those products which have certain uniqueness, okay? Which have certain uniqueness which is associated with the, which is place of origin. And it is associated with historical stories, okay? Certain historical stories are there, legends are there, myths are there, folklore, etc. are associated with it. So um, what we can use, uh, so we can use these things in the advertisement of the product and we can, it will help us to build a brand image. For example, uh, the historical record stated, states that in 647 AD, the king of Kashmir presented saffron. Saffron is a GI tech product from Kashmir. So king of, uh, king of Kashmir presented saffron as a gift to Chinese emperor who visited Kashmir at the time. So history says this is the historical record. Similarly, for Chokwa rice of Assam, which is a GI tech, drop, uh, GI tech product from Assam, so the history says that in 18, uh, 1879, a book was written by W.W. W. Hunter, the statistical account of Assam. So there he mentioned about the Chokwa rice of Assam. Similarly, so many instances are there. So we can use this, uh, we can use this information in uh, building the brand image of our product, okay, GI tech product. So it will help, it will help us to create a, brand, to create a brand image in the global market. So GI can be used to build a brand image and we can, it can be used to promote our product at international level. So for example, uh, I'm discussing, I'm, I want to mention about Pashmina shawls once again. So this is Empress Josephine, the queen of Alexander the Great. Uh, she was the wife of Alexander the Great, Empress Josephine. So she was a style icon of that period and history dates back to 18th century. And she, at that time, she had um, a shawl collection, Pashmina shawl collection, more than 50 shawls she had, Pashmina shawls. So this is the history, okay? This is the history which dates back to the history of Pashmina shawls dates back to 18th century. That means at the time, the Empress Josephine, she owned more than 50 Pashmina shawls. So we can use this information to promote our product. That means we have a long standing history. Now there are certain products. There are certain products, GI tech products, which have already earned global reputation, which have already earned global reputation. For example, in India, we can tell that basmati rice, 
then Darjeeling tea, then uh, paper from Cambodia, then Florida orange, USA, then Malaysia's coffee, then again coconut oil from Mal Malaysia, then Italy's olive oil, it's very, very famous product. So there are numerous products in the world, okay, which are GTA products, but they have already on the global reputation. So now recently there was a report which was published uh, by the European Commission in 2020. So it was stated that GI takes agri-food and drink products represent a cell value of 74.76 billion euro. That means simply by marketing the GI tech products in European Union, like the Tuscany olives or Rockford cheese. Okay, these are the GI tech products. So there is a big market, actually there is a huge market in the international uh, level. Okay, in European uh, Union, they have sold GATEC products, which is worth uh, rupees, uh, Euro 74.76 billion. So we can explore this particular market. We can explore this type of markets. There is a huge market in the domestic as well as international uh, arena. So we can go for it. At the time of, uh, actually, at the time of uh, GI-based branding, we need to have a logo, okay? Importance of logo in branding. We should know the logo is very, very important because it helps the producers, it helps the consumer to identify the product immediately. But simply by looking at the logo, we can identify that, yes, this is this product. For example, simply by looking at the uh, logo of uh, McDonald's, you can say that, yes, this is McDonald's. Yes, it helps the consumer to create a strong impression. It builds trust, okay? So there are so many advantages of a logo. So whenever we file in GI application, then along with the application, we have to submit the logo of the product. We have to prepare the logo of the product and we have to submit so that it helps to uh, create a build image or it helps, to, uh, it helps the consumer to identify the product immediately. But there are, uh, so in the GI registry has so far registered more than 344 different products and each and every product has different logo. So there may be a, a kind of confusion among the customers. So in order to avoid those kind of things, uh, the government of India has recently uh, developed a logo, common logo for all the GI tech products. So this is the logo which is developed by government of India uh, where, with a tagline that is Amulya Bharati Amulya Nidhi, the incredible uh, tre uh, invaluable treasure of incredible India. So this is the tagline. So this is the common logo for all the registered GI products in India. So this is the certifying mark. mark. Now, whenever we will see this mark on any product, then immediately we can identify that, yes, this is a GI tag product. This will be the common logo and it will come with a tagline. So now, what is the scope of e-marketing of GI product? Okay, so marketing is actually very, very important. So whenever we uh, want to go for uh, we want to exploit the actually the benefit of GI tag, then we have to go for marketing. So now with this e-marketing is coming up. So we can go for e-marketing of the GI tag products. Okay, so global marketing. So first thing, first advantage is that we can easily catch the global market. Okay, by doing the e-marketing, we can easily catch the global market then uh, instant uh, transaction services are there okay anybody can uh, put the order anywhere from the world okay time effective mechanism uh, marketing then low cost of operation okay low cost of operation simply by uh, a mobile device or mobile app we can start the e-marketing or convenience it is very convenient and quick service so there are so many advantages so e-marketing of the GI product is very, very important. So there is sufficient scope for development of uh, e-marketing of this GI tech product. So there are numerous, uh, nowadays there are so many web portals who are 
doing the e-marketing of GI Tech product. For example, www.gitech.com. They also sell the GI Tech products. So we can develop this kind of uh, things and we can exploit the e-marketing and we can earn money. So similarly, startup companies may also be there to go for e-marketing of GI Tech products. So Startup India scheme, which was launched in 2016, then in 2019, and the National Innovation and Startup Policy for Students and Faculty of Higher Educational Institute was developed. So as part of this policy, students can also have their own startup company. Students can, can have, so they will uh, get some benefit for their attendance percentage also. So many provisions are there. That means uh, at the stage when they're student, where they're studying. And so from that stage only, they can have their own startup company. So startup company to promote the GI products is a very lucrative um, aspect. So we can have a look at uh, it. Now the Honorable, uh, recently during the COVID pandemic, our Honorable Prime Minister on the Modi's campaign was vocal for local, okay? Vocal for local. So uh, he emphasizes the need to market the local products in Indian and international markets, okay? To revive the economy of the country. So vocal for local, when we say about vocal for local, then also we can tell that yes, vocal for local is also very good. And because uh, GI, are, uh, GI is granted only to the local products, okay? Which are found only in a particular area. So GI-based branding can be used to promote, promote the local agricultural products across the world. So it's a certificate, GI is a certificate that these products are only from a particular locality. So using this GI-based branding, it can be used to promote, promote the local products, particularly agricultural or horticultural products across the globe. Now let us discuss about a success story. Success story means uh, there are so many success stories of GI products, but this is Araku Valley coffee. Okay, this is found only in the um, Andhra Pradesh. So uh, this is a uh, this is a coffee. This is very very good. It is organically grown in that particular area. Actually, the climate in Araku okay, is it's very typical, hot days with cool nights, and the soil is naturally iron-rich soil. So in this particular area, that means Araku Valley of Andhra Pradesh, uh, the tribal people of this particular area, they originally produced this particular coffee. So now recently in 2018 in Paris, this Araku Valley coffee received gold medal for the best coffee pod in Paris. APQ 2018. Okay, and there are now Araco Valley wine, Araco Valley coffee has been exported to various parts of the world. They are earning huge amount of money. The traditional people, the original tribal people, they are earning a huge amount of money by selling this Araco Valley coffee. This is a GI tech product. Now, recently there has been a news on the Basmati butter. We know Basmati rice is very, very famous. So there, recently there is a Basmati war between India and Pakistan once again. That means the Basmati rice is a GI tech product from India. So in India, actually seven states like Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, then parts of Uttar Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, there are seven states. Uh, which got the GI tagging for Basmati rice. But historically, it was produced in undivided India for a long period of time. So we know about the, the history says that we know about the Hir Ranja, Punjabi poem Hir Ranja. So with this back to 1766, in that particular poem, the Basmati rice was mentioned. So history says that it was uh, this back to 1766. And India is the largest producer and exporter of basmati rice in the world. So whenever rice is exported outside India, then there are two classes, basmati and non-basmati. These are only two classes, basmati rice and non-basmati. So India is the largest producer and exporter of basmati. 
so india actually exports 65% uh, of the basmati and rest 35% basmati comes from pakistan so uh, india actually after obtaining the gi tag india applied uh, gi registration in july 2016 in european union union because i have already mentioned that gi is a territorial right that means if we want protection here in india we have to register it here if we want the protection in europe then we have to file the registration in european union that is why to get the protection gi protection india after obtaining the gi tag here in india so india filed the gi application in 2018 in european union okay so after that uh, pakistan the rice exporter association of pakistan they filed an opposition they filed an opposition because they also uh, they fear they fear losing the lucrative basmati export market of europe european indian if india gets the gi tag then they may not have that particular uh, then they may not be able to export basmati from pakistan also and so that is why they have uh, lost an opposition in european in union and uh, now the case is pending there and uh, let us see what happens so it is very very important to protect our right because india since india obtained the gi tag over basmati rice basmati rice years back that is why india was in a position to file the gi application in european indian european indian oh, union these things are very very important so whenever we file any gi application we whenever we get any gi tag immediately the question comes to us what will be our monetary benefit how will we get the money so it's not about it it's not like that if you get the gi tag today from the next day onward the huge money will come to us but we since we have to protect our rights since we have to protect our products from biopirates or misappropriation then or the for that also it is very very important for us to obtain the gi registration now the registration process now we know that why what is gi why, how why we should go for gi registration now if we want to register uh, a product under the gi act then what will be the registration process so first uh, first phase is the filing of application first we have to file the application so for that we have to prepare the form okay we have to say, uh, submit the statement of the case then we have to submit uh, the additional representation then we have to give a map okay map where the clear demarcation will be there the where that particular product will be found or where that particular product will be grown then we have to submit one logo for it submit the now the question comes who will be the applicant since this is a community right now who will be the applicant so only the genuine producers okay genuine producers can be the applicant so it must be in the form of certain organization or registered organization registered organization and they must represent the interest of the producers suppose i have an ngo and one of my uh, and the objective of this particular ngo is to protect and promote the traditional textile so now if we want to uh, file a gi application for a rice variety or any horticultural product then i may not be the applicant because my the the aim of aim and objective of my ngo is to protect and promote the traditional goods uh, textile goods so if we want to file a gi application for any agricultural good or horticultural good then in our under objective must be to promote and protect the agricultural good that means the applicant must represent the interest of the producer then only he can be the applicant and then registration is compulsory okay if it is an ngo then it, it must be registered under the societies act or it may be a trust also okay so registration is compulsory then only he can be the applicant so for first we have to file the application okay we have to pay a particular amount of fee that is rupees 5000 to the gi registry gi registry is situated in chennai then the gi registry will scrutinize our application first they will scrutinize our application 
and they will issue the first examination report. So then the uh, applicant has to give the compliance report. Okay, they have to give the compliance report. Then there will be one consultative group meeting, consultative group meeting, one or more consultative group meetings may be there. It may be anywhere in the in the in our country. Okay, so for Assam Agriculture University, we have till date filed five different uh, GI applications for five different products. So we have attended the consultative group meetings. Uh, those were held in New Delhi, Kolkata, like that. So we have to take our uh, the producers who are the applicant. We are the facilitators. Assam Agriculture University is the facilitator. We have facilitated the process and we take our producer and we have attended the consultative group meeting. Then after the consultative group meeting, they will give us the examination report. And again, we have to give the compliance report of this examination report. Then there, there may be one or two hearings also. So after that, if all the procedure is done, then they, it is published in the GI journal. So there is one journal, we call it GI journal. It is published by the GI registry. So it is an online journal. So they publish our application in the GI journal. Now it is open for public inspection. So if anybody wants to file any objection, then within three months, okay, within three months from the publication in the GI journal, they can file the objection. So then if somebody files the objection, then we have to, again, the applicant has to give the counter statement. Then again, there will be, uh, there, they, will, they will have to give the, produce the evidences, then there will be hearing. And if nobody files, uh, and if nobody files any uh, objection, then it will, the GI registry will grant the GI registration and they will issue the registration certificate. So this is the, actually this is the registration process, okay? So GI application is a techno-legal document. First thing is the techno-legal document. So we have to submit a huge number of information along with historical support and technical information. So many things are there. So uh, we have to draft the application very, very carefully. Okay, since it is a very long process, we have to draft the application very, very carefully. And it, it takes about uh, two years, near about two years to get the registration. So it's a long process. So actually what happens in our area, so if we do not facilitate the process of GI registration, then it becomes difficult for the indigenous people, for the local people, okay? And they do not know how to file the GI application, where to file, what to do, how to attend the consultative group meeting, how to submit the compliance report, everything. So if we have that particular expertise, then it is good if we can facilitate few products from our area for the benefit of the stakeholders or the indigenous people. So whenever we find any application, so one of the most important thing is that we have to establish a proof of origin. It may be in the form of any literature, okay? It may be form of any literature or a written document or book or journal, okay? But sometimes it becomes very, very difficult for us to find uh, this kind of proof in the form of literature or historical record. Because in our Northeast India, we are very, very rich in traditional knowledge, but we have some oral tradition, okay? For some, uh, for example, in Assam, the missing side, they have, they are mostly oral tradition. There is no written history like that. So in that case, it becomes difficult for us to file a GI application. But uh, sometimes what we can do, we can produce the certificates, awards, etc. also in order to, in order to establish the proof of origin. Uh, for example, the Kangra tea, it is a GI tech product. Okay, it, it begged gold and silver medals in the Amsterdam and London markets in 1886 to 1895. Okay, during that period, it congratulated begged gold and silver medals. So this certificate, this award was actually, it was uh, produced as a proof of origin and it ultimately got the GI tag. So once the GI tag is granted, then the term of GI is 10 years. And in every 10 years, we can renew it, okay, by paying a particular amount of fee and we can maintain it indefinitely. 
Now there are uh, numerous uh, products. Okay, numerous potential products in the horticulture sector from the northeastern region, particularly for citrus, banana, and jackfruit. Then cereals, we have numerous cereals. For example, Johar rice of Assam. Okay, it is a GI tech product um, uh, which was facilitated with by our agriculture university. So Johar rice of Assam, it is, uh, it is an aromatic rice. Okay, it is a very famous aromatic rice and history says, states that. So actually we all know about Ramayana Mahabharata. So in Ramayana, the, there was one poet, Madhav Kandali. Madhav Kandali, he translated Ramayana to Assamese. So at that time in his translation, he mentioned that the Kumbhakarna, who is Ravan's brother, Kumbhakarna, who used to sleep for a very long period of time. And he used to eat a lot. So uh, when he once he wakes up from his sleep, then he starts eating. So the royal cooks, he pre do, they prepare foods from him. Uh, so one of those dishes were prepared from Khorika Joha variety. It is a Joha variety from Assam. So Khorika Joha is also a GIT product under the Joha rice of Assam. So history says, okay, the Joha rice was known from the time um, in Mahabharata. Ramayana, sorry. So these are the things. So these are the things uh, we have to remember. We have to produce some historical proof. Then cereals, then pulses, then ginger turmeric. The carbiangulum ginger is a GITEC product from Assam. Then vegetables are there. Okay, naga mecha, naga mechi, uh, We call it hujjalokya. Okay, and this is a GITEC product. Then tuber crops. They have also the these crops have also potential to get the GI tag. Then spices, medicinal plants, then flowers, orchids. It means so many horticultural products are here which have tremendous potential. Uh, so recently, the horticultural products in Northeast India with GI tag. So these are some of the products, and recently. Kaji Nemo, that is Assam Lemon, uh, got the GI tag. Uh, it was also facilitated by Assam Agriculture University. So Kaji Nemo is actually, it is unique in terms of because it is seedless variety of lemon. Okay, and it has an unique, it has a unique aroma taste and it has got certain um, medicinal properties also. So these are some the products. Okay, that's Purlichi. Lichi is also famous product. This Pudichi is also a GITEC product from Assam. So there are so many agro-horticultural products. We have obtained uh, the GITEC so far, but we have to exploit the uh, marketing potential of it. So let us see the SWOT analysis of agricultural and horticultural GIs in uh, Northeastern India, uh, Northeast part of India. So what are our strengths actually? So first thing, uh, the agroclimatic diversity, we all know that we are very rich in biodiversity. Uh, there is agroclimatic diversity, so there are numerous potential products. So history of organic farming is there, okay? History of organic farming is there. Uh, it is traditionally, we, all the products have been produced by, or all the produce, products have been produced organically. So there is proximity to export destinations. So some of the, we have some of the neighboring states where we can export our products. And since there is adequate rainfall during monsoon, so there is scope for uh, good production of this particular, uh, good, good uh, there is scope for good production in this particular area. And there is sufficient uh, potential for commercialization, okay? So we have opportunity for organic farming. Now it is uh, organic farming is coming up so we can uh, develop this product organically and we can earn money from it, okay? But the weakness is that the poor socioeconomic condition. Our farmers, our producers are economically a little bit poor. The socioeconomic condition is poor and we have very low level of awareness. We do not know what is GI, how to earn money from it, how to go for GI registration. For, for, furthermore, the lack of market access is another weakness, okay, subsistence, farming also. So um, these are certain weaknesses, okay. We are slow pace in developing, adopting the technologies. 
so and certain threats are also there threat means this is a very major threat because now it is our rural youths okay they are not interested uh, towards the farming jobs okay they are not interested in agriculture or horticulture My, this is a very common and burning problem okay so so many insurgency is also there plus uh, price fluctuations may also be there so we have some strength we have some opportunity but at the same time we have certain weakness we have some threats also so and these are actually the registered gis which were facilitated by assam agricultural university so johar is of assam in 2016 Then Kajinemu uh, in 2019. Then Sokwa rice of Assam. It is 2020. Sokwa rice of Assam. It is a semi-glutinous rice. Okay, it's a specialty rice. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is uh, used to produce the kumal sal. Kumal sal is a ready-to-eat product. Okay. We, uh, when we soak the rice in water for a few uh, minutes, then immediately we we can consume it without uh, cooking. Okay. without kitum kumal saul is a famous product of assam so so kwar rice is mainly used to produce the kumal saul so these are the three uh, gi registered products furthermore two more products are here uh, we have facilitated one is kulam gamosa kulam gamosa we have facilitated the registration gi registration it is under process and the fifth product is judima judima is a traditional wine of the dimasa people it is a rice based beer okay we have facilitated the gi registration of judima so actually there are uh, numerous uh, traditional wines from this particular region so feni of goa is the first product feni of goa is the first registered gi product under the wines and beverages okay so there is tremendous potential rice based uh, beer, beers because these are gluten free so we facilitated the gi registration of judima which is a traditional wine of dimasa people actually in 2017 and the government of assam declared judima as judima and khaspani these two are the declared uh, by the government of assam as heritage wine and after that we applied for the gi registration it is under the process so these three are the products johar rice of assam kajinemu and sokwa rice these three products are registered products which are facilitated by assam agricultural university and gamusa and judima these two are under process now the last part the challenges of gi registration in india so gi registration is a challenging task because first thing there is lack of awareness on gi registration our people do not know about the gi registration what is gi what are the benefits of gi how to file a gi application our since our customers do not know so whenever we get the gi tag they, they are not ready to pay the premium price because they do not know what is a gi tag product okay lack of awareness on gi registration so we should create awareness on gi registration then only we can get the benefit then only we can then only our uh, consumer will be ready to pay premium price for it then only our producers will be benefited so identification of products is very very important because we have got so many products but we do not know what is its uniqueness whether that the uniqueness is due to its place of production or not because gi um, gi registration is a long process it takes time it takes money so in it takes endless effort so uh, we have to identify only those products which are uh, which will be granted the gi tag so identification of product this is another challenging task and who will identify the product that is also very very important who will identify we need some technical expert we need technical expert we need the supporting documents okay then question of beneficiaries so whenever uh, whenever we want to file in the gi tag for a particular tag then immediately the question of beneficiaries comes who will file the uh, who will file the application okay who who will be the uh, applicant do they have a valid registration okay do they represent the interest of the producer this thing will come they cop organized producer group okay this is another challenging task 
we have to organize the producers okay first of all we have to organize the genuine producers we have to organize the genuine producers then we have to obtain the um, a valid registration okay they must have valid registration under the societies act or trust act then they should have a good bylaw or sub rule okay stating that they represent the interests of the producers so there are numerous challenges in their registration pre registration challenges plus post registration challenges will be there so it is not a very easy task but we should try to promote our product we should try to protect our product under the gi act so these are some issues and concerns uh, so gi status is not exploited post registration so once we obtain the registration then we have the capacity to exploit uh, the gi status okay with the post registration how to build the brand uh, how to uh, exploit the market how to go for exporting of the gi tech products these things we need to streamline so lack of background work for filing and awareness so whenever we we have suppose we have identified a product okay we have identified a product yes we can go for gi filing but who will do the background work we need the background work we have to collect so many information okay so lack of background work for filing and awareness this is another issue so limited consumer awareness of gi we do not know our consumers they do not know what is gi tech they do not know that if it is a gi tech product that means it has certain uniqueness and this products are found only in a particular area so if our consumers they do not know about the gi tagging its benefits then they are not ready to pay the premium price the lack of initiative of building brand and visibility brand building is very very important gi based branding is very very important but due to lack of initiative it may not be possible okay then lack of formal organization structure or control mechanism so whenever we file in gi application then we have to give uh, the structure of uh, inspection body okay so in so that we can maintain the quality of the product there will be inspection body inspection body will look after the quality standards we will have to set we'll have to set certain standard benchmarks for it so the quality control mechanism should be there okay the uh, in, there will be constitution of the inspection committee okay they will look after all these issues and only when we have a very stringent mechanism then only we can control the quality and ultimately it will help us in promoting our jtech products the requirement uh, of support in terms of r&d or marketing etc so we need support from not only government organization but uh, other non government organization or r&d or any marketing uh, to support our marketing and you know, all these things so these are certain issues and concerns particularly for our area so finally we can say that there is a good future of gi tech products in the global market okay global market is very very weak now the elite customers they prefer to buy gi tech products because they know that gi tech product means this uh, these are the unique products which are found only in a particular area so gi will provide ways for business leveraging and attracting consumers if we can uh, implement it in a well defined way well planned way then we can there is, uh, we can exploit the benefit and there exists tremendous scope for entrepreneurship development in the region because we can have some startup company to market our gi tech products we can have some e marketing portals even students can also have their own startup companies to market the gi tech products because if we go for marketing then only we can our stakeholders can earn the benefit without proper marketing we cannot earn anything our uh, producers will not get the benefit so socio economic for socio economic development of the stakeholder it is very very important that we create an awareness among uh, among our customers about the gi tagging we plan uh, some good business we should have some good business plans we should have some entrepreneurs entrepreneurs uh, to do the marketing of this products then only our socio economic condition of the stakeholders will 
be improved. So with this, uh, I would like to um, uh, finish my presentation and thank you all. So if you have any the doubt or query, then I'll be happy if I'll try to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Can you hear me, madam? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. So it was a very nice presentation. So you had elaborately explained different about uh, GI and uh, the product which has already been uh, GI tech. So I would like to request to our participants to have questions, means it is time for discussions with our madam. So please raise some questions so that uh, we will successfully complete the sessions. So you can even uh, write a question here in the chat box and I will unmute you also. Yes, from participants, is there any question? Participants, if you have any queries and questions, you can. Huh, there were a question from PC Venkaya How to register GI? Is it online or through agent? Uh, yes, uh, actually uh, you can file uh, an application online also, or um, you can uh, submit it offline also. And if, uh, if you want, then you can take the service of a patent at, uh, attorneys also, IP attorneys, okay? IP attorneys, you can take the help from IP attorneys or you can, if you have the expertise, then you can, what you can do, you can file it yourself also. Yes. But you can facilitate it because GI application is filed uh, by the applicant, what the producer group, okay? Who represent the interest of the producer. So if you have the technical expertise, if you can identify any product, then what you can do, you can uh, facilitate the registration process by uh, if you have some applicant NGO or any trust who have a valid registration, then you can facilitate the forms are there. Then uh, in, forms are already available in the web, website of GI registry. So you can download the forms and you can fill it up and you can uh, give the map and along with the historical proof, then logo. You can file uh, along with the affidavit, you can file the application, but the applicant has to be and a, a producer group who represent the interests of the producer. And if you search the net, then you will find some uh, intellectual property rights uh, law firm. They, all, they can also assist you in filing the application. The application fee is rupees 5,000 initially. After that, you have to go to attend, uh, after, after that, you have to attend one or more consultative group meetings, uh, which will be held uh, outside, uh, in, in India, uh, it may be in Kolkata or New Delhi like that. 
so we need uh, to have some uh, money okay we need to have some fund then only we can go for filing otherwise you can uh, facilitate uh, the process uh, of the registration thank you thank you ma'am for the answer so is there any participants want to ask more questions directly unmute directly unmute can uh, madam yes okay directly and in can interact with the madam so i can say any sir i have one Uh, what about this uh, other uh, on this agricultural uh, product and varieties one what about cloth and the traditional uh, utensil or material or cloth can it be can we get that can it be register the material sir what is pardon sir what is your question yeah my question is Yes. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. 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 Yes, madam. Can you hear me? Am Hello? I audible? Oh yes, yes. I didn't yeah. get the question. Uh, the question is, ma'am, besides horticulture and agriculture products, so can we yes. go for GI resist GI tech for clothes and utensils and all? Yes, yes, yes. Clothes, clothes, traditional textile can be. Uh, Uh, go, uh, can be uh, filed for GI uh, GI tagging, okay? Traditional textile, then utensils. Utensils not as but pottery or any brass material or any unique products can be uh, registered under this particular act. Traditional textile is very uh, potential good for GI registration. Because whenever we go for the registration of our traditional textile, then along with the textile material, the shapes and all the designs also get protected. हाँ निकला है ना तो मैं तो निकला है यार कमारा टी पहुँचा हूँ Excuse me, Doctor Simpi Sarkar. Please unmute. Please unmute. Please unmute. Please unmute. उटरप्शन <laughs> <laughs> now you can
Okay, is there any question? Let me yeah. check, sir. No. Okay, one more question is there, ma'am. Is there any difference between the process of GI registration and patent registration? Is there in the chat box? Madam, please unmute yourself and speak. Oh, Madam, uh, please unmute audible? yourself. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay. okay. So there is huge difference yes, between... Yes, uh, you are audible, yes. Uh, yes, uh, there is a huge difference between patent application and GI application because patent is granted to industrial designs. Okay, industrial uh, properties. Sorry, industrial patent is granted to industrial property and it is granted to inventions which are novel, which have certain inventive shape or which has the industrial applicability. But whereas GI is granted to those products which are of traditional use okay which are associated with traditional knowledge and the products which are uh, which are based on any traditional knowledge are not patentable in india so in order to protect any product which are based on traditional knowledge we have to go for gi registration so there is this difference between patent and gi so patent should be completely new any patented invention should be totally new it should be novel it should not be in the prior art Whereas GI, the products which are which will go for GI registration are already in the public domain. Okay, they are based on traditional knowledge. So this is the difference between GI registration and patent application. Thank you. No more questions. Okay, ma'am, thank you so much. So we had a good discussion. Yes. Okay, thank you okay, to the organizers okay. for accepting. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here and speak on geographical indication. Thank you so much. Thank you the organizing members and secretary and all uh, the participants. Okay, thank you. Okay. Can you hear me, ma'am? Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, yes. thank you so much for so much, ma'am, for accepting our request and uh, okay. decide your busy schedule. You are coming here and delivering your lecture. So we are thankful from our side, from the organizing committee, from the or from ID Nahabdex. So uh, Thank you. And also I request to all the participants, thank you for being with us and we'll meet in our session at 3 p.m. Okay. Thank so, you, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you